check this out, geeks. Nothing gets my goat more than when I settle in on my sofa with a six pack of Mountain Dew for a Call of Duty session with my online clan and the game servers are down for maintenance. Down. And I'll tell you what, if there's one thing in your life you don't want to see is a worked up FPS granny who can't get her shooting fix. This is why it's important to always clearly communicate downtime to your users. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of bitter haters on your Facebook feeds. Now, someone who knows a lot about communicating is Sean. That's because he likes to talk a lot. Too much? That's not for me to say. But I'm sure he'll want to yammer on and on about good communication principles. Right, Sean? What? Talk too much. Me. Maybe I have a few things to say about things I am the quick to post after all, but I don't think I talk too much. I think I talk just the right amount. And at least I don't sit in front of my computer screen that has cats on it all the time. Anyway. Every system administrator has at some point had to take their system down either for scheduled maintenance or upgrades. Our experience as a company with 200 people worldwide is that you have to communicate thoroughly so that you can avoid confusion, disappointment and angry rioting. So here are some tips about how you can communicate scheduled downtime. As much fun as it can be to spring surprises on your users, it's usually best to give them at least a few days notice before planned downtime. This gives them a chance to organize themselves, plan their work and so on. The larger the impact on users, the more the lead time should be. For example, server maintenance on important systems should be communicated to users at least a week beforehand, while smaller changes can be a day or two in advance. In most cases, a single email is not enough because, as all IT professionals are well aware, users don't read these IT mails. Depending on the expected impact, send one email one week before, then one a few days before, then send one on the day before, and then on the day. Multiple notices will help keep them reminded about the scheduled downtime. Oh, and don't forget to send them a mail once the systems are back up and running. For scheduled downtime, select a time that is the least inconvenience for the majority of your users. If you're a global company, you're always going to affect some of the users, but if you find a time zone where the least amount of your users are, the better. The downside of this is it's usually going to be at a time that's inconvenient for you, the sysadmin. But we would rather inconvenience a few system administrators than a full company, right? And who doesn't love doing server maintenance at 3 a.m.? Communicate upcoming downtime through multiple channels. Email is the main medium, but you can also use web pages, social media, internal methods such as Microsoft Teams or Slack, application start pages, carrier pigeons, the possibilities are endless. The best medium to use will depend on whether you are trying to reach internal users, existing customers, or the general public. For applications, place a notification on the login or the startup page. For smartphone apps, for example, you can use in-app notifications or push notifications. If you offer services over the internet and these services will be down, you can use a third-party online website such as Constant Status or Status Page to inform your users. As we all learned in school, with communication, we have to answer the W questions. What? When? Where? Why? Who? and how. What is happening? What parts of the infrastructure are affected? What services are affected? What services are not affected? What can and can't users do during the downtime? When? When is the downtime happening? How long will systems and services be down for? Why? Why are we doing this? What is the reason behind the downtime? Why are we here? Only that's, that's something I put in there because I felt like putting it in, I don't know, we'll see. Who? Who's impacted? And who should users contact if they have any questions or support queries? And where? Which locations are impacted? When it comes to the how question, you have an option of how much information you want to provide to your audience. If they're mainly non-technical, an overview is enough. That's all they need to plan their work and get ready for the downtime. However, if your users are well-versed technically, they'll appreciate the extra information. A while ago, GitLab accidentally lost some production data, but they communicated transparently and even live-streamed the recovery. This was deeply respected and appreciated by their very technical user base. Finally, as part of your message, if users need to do anything after the downtime, such as change their passwords, you need to communicate this as well. Keep it clear and concise. If your message isn't clear and to the point, it might get deleted before it's read. Structure and format the information that the details are easy to find. We at Pesla have found the most useful format to be a table with all the relevant information. It's short and easy to read. 
As a last piece of advice, feel free to err on the side of being apologetic. You are providing a service to your users and, whether it's your fault or not, you have to disrupt that service. Feel free to acknowledge that. And now, Betty, I hope I haven't spoken too much. Back to you. Um, <clears throat> this communication thing seems to be quite a battle. But don't shy away from challenges, geeks. Look at me. When I told my homies I'd be spitting funny lines on YouTube, they all laughed at me. Nobody's laughing now. If you like what you've seen so far, which I freaking assume, it would be nice if you would subscribe to our channel by clicking here. Here.